In this video, we'll take a look at a few different ways that a computer can process data to run a program or complete a task. First, let's see how sequential computing works. Now, sequential computing completes one task at a time in order. So let's zoom into your computer to see exactly what goes on. Let's say a computer has four tasks to carry out. If sequential computing is used, it'll take one task at a time and put it through the processor. So the first task, then the second, then the third, and then the last one. Now, depending on how many tasks there are, this could definitely cause the computer to work slowly. It's not so bad with four tasks, but imagine if a computer needed to complete like a hundred or a thousand tasks. This would absolutely cause the computer to slow down. So let's imagine that it's you that are super busy and have all of these tasks that need to be completed. How could you get them done faster? Well, you might get some friends to help. This would definitely speed up the process. You could take your tasks and divide them amongst you and your friends. For a computer, they can do the same thing. This is considered parallel or distributed computing. Using parallel and distributed computing, you can complete multiple tasks at the same time because we're going to use more than one processor, just like using more than one person. The words parallel and distributed computing are very, very similar. Parallel computing is most often used within the same computer when they use shared memory. And distributed computing would use more than one computer. These computers would have to communicate with each other, just like you and your friends. Either way, both these methods use more than one processor, and that's the most important part. So let's jump back into our computer. Let's add a second processor and split up the tasks. This time, we can complete two tasks at a time and work through the program at a quicker pace. With parallel computing, the result was found twice as fast. So this, of course, helps with speed, but there are a few challenges when using parallel computing. Let's say there's an error in step one of the program. With parallel computing, it might be a little harder to find the bug. Was it in the green step one or the red step one? We'd have to check each one. Now this might not seem like a big deal with only this many tasks, but this can become a big problem if we add more and more processors. If we go back to sequential computing, we can find the bug right away because we're only using one processor. We know exactly which step one they're talking about. The steps are done in order. Another challenge in parallel computing is that the architecture or the setup is very complex, pretty difficult. If there's a task that relies on another task being completed first, it'll slow down the system. Take a look here. We have a red 1A and a red 1B, and then a green 2A and a green 2B, and they haven't been paired in the right way. If 1B is waiting on 1A to complete, then the program is delayed. The top tasks cannot move yet. Now 2B is on the bottom. That one's waiting on 2A to complete, the green 2A. So in this case, parallel computing did not make the program any faster. And since processors can add to the expense of a system, this was a result in a higher cost of computing with no benefit. All right, so if we compare the two, sequential computing is definitely slower because it completes one task at a time, but it is easier to find bugs and there's no setup needed. With parallel computing, it completes things faster because it's completing tasks simultaneously but it does make it a little difficult to find bugs and definitely difficult to use and set up correctly. Parallel computing can also be paired with distributed computing if we use more than one computer. So let's say we have a ton of tasks to complete. We could try to build one supercomputer with high processing power and put a whole bunch of processors in there, but that could get expensive pretty fast. There also are still limits to how fast one computer can run this is mostly due to the heat that's generated when computers run. So instead, we can split the test to different computers. This is still parallel computing since we are using more than one processor in each computer. And there are a lot of advantages of a distributed system. Let's say one computer shuts down and stops working. That computer's task can be redirected to a working computer. The system is redundant, which means it's fault tolerant. The program won't stop working if one computer fails. Another advantage is that the system can easily be expanded if more tasks need to be completed. If we were still working with that one supercomputer, we'd have to shut down the program to try to upgrade the computer to be able to handle this increasing task load. And again, there still are limits to the processing power of one computer. 
With distributed systems, however, we can just add another computer when it's needed. This makes the system scalable. You can add or remove computers when you want. So distributed computing comes with benefits, but then also challenges. The benefits are that it is scalable. You can add computers or remove computers. It's fault tolerant. It's okay if one, pro uh, one computer does not work, we can use the other computers. And that makes it reliable as well. Now the challenges are that it is complex. With multiple computers, you have to worry about them communicating with each other, what tasks which computer is going to complete, and that kind of makes it expensive to maintain as well. All right, well, that's a quick overview on the different ways your computer can process information.